Hey everyone, I'm pleased to announce the official and final release of Minecart Rapid Transit Station version 4.1. This is an advanced, fully automated, two-way minecart station that is designed for busy multiplayer servers. It's powered purely by the rails, redstone, and pistons that are provided in the vanilla version of Minecraft, thus it does not use any mods. Now there are a lot of features I want to go over in this video, so I've organized the video into various sections. On the left hand side of your screen, I've put up several convenient annotation links, which you can use to jump to these different sections. These links are also available in this video's description. Alright, so that's enough with the introduction. Let's take a look at the station. Alright, so here we are in a little village on my test world here. And what I've done is I've installed an MRT station right next to it. Now, a station might be a bit too modern for the villagers' cobblestone and wood hut standards, but uh, I haven't heard them complain about it yet. Uh, in any case, uh, this is Grass Village Station. And to enter the station, all we need to do is push this green button here to open the door, and we just walk inside. Now, there's a passenger walkway that wraps around the whole outer edge of the station, as you can see there. And to depart, we need to look for a departure bay. And fortunately for us, there's one right here. Uh, this is the westbound departure bay, and each departure bay is lined by diamond blocks, which makes them easy to find. Now you'll see inside the bay there's a cart waiting for us to depart here, and all we need to do is right-click on the cart, and off we go. Uh, there's no need to push any buttons, it's fully automatic and easy to use. Now we're coming up onto Plateau Station, it's an, actually an underground station, and now we're going to take a look at what kind of things that the player can do once they arrive at a station. Now the first scenario I'm going to go over is just, I'm just in this case, I'm going to stay in the cart and not do anything. Um, you'll also notice on the left here there's some signs that'll tell us which station we're on and some instructions. So we'll hear that chime go off. It goes off after about nine seconds of waiting inside and basically the cart will just continue on and I'll be continuing down the line to the next station. So you could basically stay in the cart uh, forever and just wait until you get to the station that you want. Alright, so let's rewind for a bit here and let's say I wanted to actually get out of the cart at Plateau Station. In this case, uh, once I get, I'm in the arrival bay, I'll just right click and to get out of the cart and then I'll stand on this glass block here. What will happen is, once a chime plays, this glass block will fall out, and I'll be in this arrival court. Notice that the glass block has been put back here, so I can't actually jump back up onto the arrival bay and disrupt any other further incoming carts. So to exit, I'll just need to go walk down to the end of this arrival corridor, and you'll see that I'm back in the main passenger walkway. Now, if I was the impatient sort, and didn't want to wait for the cart to leave, what I could do is, while staying in the cart, push this green button. What this will do is make the cart leave immediately and allow me to go on to the next station. Now I can also push the green button to exit the arrival bay earlier. So I can exit the cart, and press this green button, and the glass box will allow me to fall down into the arrival corridor. Alright, so for this next scenario, I'm going to try to be a griefer. And what that means is, once I'm inside the arrival bay, I'm going to break the cart and also try to stay in the arrival bay as long as I can. I'm basically going to try to not fall down into the exit corridor. So here we are, I'm going to exit the cart, I'm going to break the cart, and instead of standing on this glass block, I'm going to stand over here instead. Now what's supposed to happen is this piston to the right of me is supposed to push me down over here and down in this corridor. But there's a bug in the current 1.2 uh, series of Minecraft where the piston will just pass through the player, as you just saw there. So instead, I'm going to just try to push this button and try to get this to push me inside. There we go. And uh, if I go back upstairs, I can show you clearly how that works. Over here, this gate here. And you'll see that piston is actually that non-sticky piston just to the right uh, inside the bay there. Now the griefer could also uh, also 
break any of the blocks around the bay or break any of the pistons. But usually on a multiplayer server, that's handled by some sort of uh, anti-griefing mod that protects blocks from getting broken. So that's something that will have to be set up on your own multiplayer server. The final two arrival scenarios demonstrate how this station can handle multiplayer traffic. So here we are in a new change of scenery. This is Riverwood Station. It's uh, made out of wood instead of iron. And you'll see that in each direction there are three arrival bays. So there's one, two, three in this direction. And there's also another three, one, two, three in the other direction. So for the, one of the scenarios, let's say that if we go outside here. Let's say that there's another guy in front of me, um, and I'm just behind them. So I'm going to demonstrate this by putting an empty cart, and then I'll board the second cart that comes in. So the first cart is going to go into the first arrival bay, and I'll automatically get switched to the second arrival bay, as you can see there. Now if all three of the arrival bays are occupied, then what happens is all the other carts basically loop around until one of those arrival bays becomes vacant. So to demonstrate this, instead of two carts, I'm going to put in four carts, and I'll board the fourth cart. So those first three carts will get into the three arrival bays. And you'll see that I can't get inside, and basically I'll just loop around until one of the arrival bays is vacant, as you can see there. Alright, so I've got one last thing to show you with regards to arrivals, and that is what happens to empty carts once they leave the arrival bay. And to answer that question, you can see that well, all of the arrival bays switch on to this main track here, and go. all carts will eventually go through this uh, occupied cart detector. This is a, a plate on a fence, this is a pl stone pressure plate on top of a fence, and what happens is, uh, for occupied carts, where there's a player inside, the player will actually trigger this plate here. And that will engage this switch, allowing the player to continue out of the station. Now for empty carts, they won't trigger that plate, and instead they'll get switched down into the chute and get fed into the dispenser. Now one, dis one difference from version 3.0 is that in version 3.0, the carts that went in the same direction go into the same dispenser. So here we're in going in an eastbound direction, but actually all the empty carts get fed down into the westbound dispenser and vice versa. This is to help balance the carts, uh, especially at terminus stations right at the end of a line. I'll be going over more of the dispenser in the next section. Alright, so let's talk about how these stations store their minecarts. On the bottom level of every station, there are two horizontal minecart dispensers, one for each direction. So you can see through these glass windows here. Each dispenser uh, collects empty carts that are no longer in use and also supply those same carts to their respective departure bays. Each dispenser has a total capacity of 26 carts, which is a big improvement from MRT version 3.0. And if you also include a departure bay, which can store one more cart, that means each direction can store 27 carts in total. And that also means each station can in total store up to 54 carts at a time. Alright, so I've got a departure bay over here. But as you can see, there's no cart waiting for me inside of it. To fix this, what I can usually do is push this button over here, and which will request a new cart from the dispenser. However, in this case, uh, nothing is happening when I push the button. And that usually indicates that the dispenser might be empty. To check this out, we can go over to the dispenser cart loader, which is on the other side uh, over here. Let's take a little walk over here. And there it is. There are several different components to this uh, cart loader. Uh, on the right hand side wall here, we've got three indicator lights. Um, these show the status of the dispenser. So this one over here will be lit if the dispenser is full. This one will be lit if the dispenser is empty. And this third one over here will be lit if there's a flush in progress. I'll explain more about flushing a bit later. Now, uh, the dispenser empty indicator is lit, so that confirms our suspicions. And we probably want to load, manually load the dispenser with carts. So we can do that with this uh, cart loader, the actual cart loader over here. And to use it, we need to stand on this stone pressure plate. The chute will open, and 
now we can place our cart on the powered rail, and the cart won't move until we get off the plate, like this. And the reason for this the mechanism is to control the rate of how many carts uh, we put into the dispenser at a time. If we put too many carts at the same time, this can jam up the internal uh, mechanisms. So I'll just load up a few more carts. And as you can see, the dispenser full indicator might turn on and off as you're loading carts. This is perfectly normal. Uh, this just means that the this turns on because the cart is passing through the last slot in the dispenser. And eventually, uh, as the carts go through the 26 slots in the dispenser, this dispenser empty indicator should turn off up and right on schedule, uh, like so. Now, if we go over back to the departure bay, we should be able to see... Now, actually, the cart won't automatically fall into the bay, which now, but now we can should be able to hit this button, and a cart will appear. And also another note about this button, if you push it while there's a cart already inside, all that'll do is cycle out the cart that's already there and just replace it with a new one. So I can do it over again here. And you'll see that the car another cart basically takes, it, takes its place. Alright, so a few last notes about the cart loader here. I've already got a full dispenser, and I decide to load up one more cart into that dispenser. What will happen is that cart will just simply get rejected and thrown back into this cart overflow area right here. Now this cart overflow track can hold up as many carts as needed. And it doesn't just apply to carts loaded through the loader here, but also empty carts that are coming in from the other direction will also find, if the dispenser is full, will also get diverted into this overflow area. And one more thing, uh, if I'm loading the cart and I right-click on the powered rail here, if I also accidentally right-click again on the cart itself, what will happen is uh, I'll get also thrown back out, uh, back onto the overflow area. This, um, this basically prevents players from getting in, stuck inside the uh, mechanism inside. Uh, how it works is there's an occupied cart detector on the other side of this wall, which is it's basically another uh, plate on a fence, and this uh, if uh, if I'm inside the cart, it'll just switch me back out onto the overflow track, as you can see there. Alright, so the last piece of functionality I want to go over is the flush dispenser mechanism. And to get to this mechanism, we need to actually go down to the dispenser level itself. And the easiest way to get there is through this maintenance access over here. Uh, behind the cart loader is a ladder which provides easy access down to the dispenser level, it's right here. And here we are. So this is the dispenser level. Uh, you can see there's one whole dispenser on this side here. Holds all 26 carts. And there's another dispenser on the other side over there. Now the flush dispenser mechanism for this dispenser here is right over here. And it's basically just this lever. When I flip this lever, what will happen is all the carts will then begin making their way out of the dispenser and diverted to the overflow area up this way, like so. Now this flush dispenser mechanism is useful if you want to troubleshoot any problems that might be happening in the dispenser, or just want to evacuate all the carts and just empty it out. And there's one last non-functional thing I want to show you, and that is this observation deck. From the pasture walkway, you can actually walk up this staircase up to the track level, and from here you can actually watch the carts coming and going. Uh, this observation deck can be converted into, into a retail space of some sort, such as a restaurant, coffee shop, a lounge, uh, anything that you may, might imagine. Alright, so that about covers all the main features I wanted to show in this station. I did upload a second video which goes over all the schematics that are available in this version, as well as a quick rundown on how to import this station into your own world. If you're interested in that, please click the annotation link shown on your screen to continue on to that video. Now, Finally, I'd like to thank all my viewers and subscribers who stuck with me over these past months, especially those who provide uh, suggestions or their own design ideas. I really appreciate them, they've really helped in uh, creating this final design. Now for the future, I am planning on perhaps setting up a, on my own multiplayer server to host these stations. Uh, nothing concrete yet, but uh, I'll let you guys know when I've got something. 
Right, so that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching.